Greetings, everyone. I hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy in these strange times. I'm Rebecca Rice, and you may know me as a professor of biology on the New Mexico Tech campus. But I come to you today as Becky, the president of the Socorro branch of the American Association of University Women. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity to introduce you to AAUW to show a few items uncovered by a project to digitize our archives and to try to convince you to join us. I'd like to make a special shout out to Lucinda Whitehorse who made the archives available for this project. The American Association of University Women was established in 1881 to advocate for gender equality and economic security. As a 5013C, AAUW is nonpartisan, but advocates for policies to improve the lives of women, such as pay equity and equal rights. Membership in the state, national, and local branches is open to all genders with a minimum of an associate's degree in any field. However, the degree requirement may soon be eliminated, so you may want to stay tuned for that. Students enrolled in degree programs can join AAUW for free, and students at New Mexico Tech have the option of joining the AAUW student group. The Socorro branch of AAUW was established in 1949. This is the first entry into the archive that lists the very first meeting in September 49 that included J.T. Clegg, who spoke about the needs of Socorro Public Schools. Uh, J.T. Clegg was the superintendent of the time. So this exemplifies the interests of AAUW in education. And if you are interested, please do join us at AAUW. Now, the major activity of AAUW has and is still is raising funds to provide scholarships to young women in Socorro County High Schools and at NMT. In 1958, AAUW Socorro sponsored an international film fiesta that included films from the USA, what was then the USSR, France, Italy, and Britain. No blockbuster superhero films here, but the Lavender Hill Mob is a 1951 British movie that stars Alec Guinness, who is now known for his portrayal of Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original Star Wars. Also screened was the 1932 Academy Award winner, The Grand Hotel. If you are a film buff and are interested in finding these films and recreating this festival, please join AAUW. Through the late 60s and 70s, AAUW partnered with the Socorro Historical Society and ran historical house tours during the winter holiday hours. This was known as Vistas de Navidad. If you are interested in reviving such fundraising activities, please join us. AAUW Socorro has always had a strong association with New Mexico Tech. This photo is from a Renaissance music concert held as part of the December 1975 Vistas de Navidad. It includes Kenneth Ford, who was then the president of New Mexico Tech, and the concert was held in the home of Betty and Barry Clark, longtime sponsors of the New Mexico Tech Performing Arts Series concert. Now, a very special find in the archive was this. And those of you who are old enough remember film and negatives. And the reason I bring this up is that we have yet to identify the photographer who took this photo. But I bring this up because one thing 
we do know is that whoever took this picture had to have access to a large format camera such as this one. What's in this photo? The photo documents the 1972 49ers parade in which AAUW won second place for their Equal Rights Amendment themed entry. And you can see that our second place award here being carried by Suzanne Lefebvre. This is Kathleen Lefebvre, who was very helpful in helping to identify all the people in this picture. This is Kay Kreibel, who was the one who drew my attention to the existence of the archive in the first place. We have David Lefevre, Sonia Lefevre, and this is Elsie Brower. And little history here. The Equal Rights Amendment was first introduced back in 1923, but then was reintroduced in 1971. It passed the House on October 12, 1971, passed the Senate in March 22, 1972. And New Mexico was the 27th state to ratify in February 1973, just a few months after this photo was taken. In 2020, Virginia ratified the ERA, giving it the two thirds states necessary to become the 28th Amendment. But alas, the deadline passed for it to become part of our Constitution. In January 2021, a joint resolution was introduced in the Congress to eliminate the deadline and pave the way to add the ERA to the Constitution. This is a work in progress. And if you are interested in advocating for issues such as the ERA, please join us. Now, you may be wondering about the central figure in this particular photo. That is none other than Dr. Lohman Bach, who was a driving force with AAUW and apparently was dressed here as Carrie Nation, the temperance activist renowned for busting up saloons with an ax. In reality, Dr. Lohman Bach had a long and illustrious career at the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources. In another segment, Dr. Nelia Dunbar, the current director of the New Mexico Bureau of Geology, will provide a biography of this remarkable woman. In that great photo that Becky just showed, we saw Dr. Christina Lockman Balk dressed as Carrie Nations, an anti-alcohol crusader. Although I can't speak to Christina's thoughts on drinking, I'm really happy to be given an opportunity to tell you a little bit about this truly remarkable scientist who was part of the New Mexico DEC geoscience community from 1955 well into the 1990s. As Becky mentioned, my name is Nelia Dunbar and I'm the director of the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources, where Christina worked when she first came to New Mexico Tech. So we have that connection. We also have a couple of other connections. Before arriving in New Mexico, Christina spent 12 years teaching at a small liberal arts college called Mount Holyoke College, one of the Seven Sisters New England All Women's Colleges where I was an undergraduate. She taught there before my time, but she was a renowned figure in the department. She was also very much a presence in the, on the New Mexico Tech campus when I arrived here as a graduate student in 1983. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, Dr. Christina Lockman Bach, who I'm going to show you a picture of, shown here, um, was a geoscientist at a time when there were very few women in the field. She received a BA and an MA from Smith College, which is another one of the Seven Sisters, and then went on to complete a PhD at Johns Hopkins, which she finished in 1933 at 26 years of age. Her field of study was paleontology and she focused her work on trilobites, a picture and a picture of a trilobite is shown beside her in the PowerPoint image. She was known around the world for her work on these fossils. 
Again, she was a pioneer in a field that was largely dominated by men and was described as having a brilliant intellect, an indomitable spirit, physical stamina, a warm personality, and also a great sense of humor. She and her husband, Robert Balk, both taught geology at Mount Holyoke College from 1935 to 1947, followed by a short time at University of Chicago. Then in 1952, Robert Balk accepted a position at the then New Mexico Bureau of Mines and Mineral Resources, where he worked until 1955 when he was killed in a really tragic plane crash when TWA Flight 206 flew right into the Sandia Mountains and killed every person on board. In the wake of Robert's death, Christina was hired into her position at the Bureau where she worked for two years before transitioning into the New Mexico Tech Geology Department where she worked until 1972. According to Clay Smith, who is pictured here with Christina, um, despite being a paleontology expert, she could, if necessary, teach any of the classes offered by the department, even optical mineralogy, which is a notorious class, both for students and professors alike. Her expertise enabled the department to increase graduate offerings, allowing a PhD program to be developed. Christina was a pioneer in the field of geology, and she was also dedicated to mentoring other women entering the profession. Her obituary, which was published in the New Mexico Geology Periodical, contains numerous testimonials from women she mentored, particularly in the area of field studies. And at that time, there were few women really actively participating in field work in the way that Christina did. And as I mentioned earlier, Christina was very much a part of the New Mexico Tech geoscience community when I arrived here in 1983. She lived in a big house up on Tech Hill and she had a lot of cats. And she was also pretty well known for her eclectic dress style. And my memory of Christina was often wearing one green high top sneaker and one red high top sneaker, in addition to shawls and other items. Um, so she was, she was quite a, a noteworthy figure. And one of the things that I have a really strong memory, as do probably a lot of the other grad students who were here at the same time, is Christina often attended the Thursday afternoon geology seminars. And um, at that time, she was in her uh, mid 70s to early 80s, I think. And she would often arrive at seminar a little bit late and she would walk down the aisle, the side aisle of the seminar room and often sit right in the front row, kind of right in the middle of the front row. And uh, you know, she was a little bit unusual looking given her mode of dress. And, um, and you, you, know, you would see the speaker notice her. And then often after the seminar, Christina might, uh, would raise her hand uh, to ask a question. And you could see the seminar speaker you know, looking at her and kind of wondering what kind of question was gonna come from this uh, somewhat eccentric looking person. Um, and then as soon as Christina started asking the question and obviously you know, had great insight and understanding of what the seminar speaker had been talking about, you would see their, their face change and, and start to really concentrate on what she was asking because it was a hard question and they were gonna have to you know, figure out a good answer. So um, we always enjoyed watching, watching the speakers um, react to Christina in that setting. Um, so to sum up, Christina Lachlan Bach was a remarkable scientist and a pioneering woman in geology. And I and the other women geoscientists at New Mexico Tech are honored to be able to follow in her footsteps. One more announcement. AAUW's uh, student group is planning a trivia night contest on March 17th. So keep your eye out for announcements uh, for another trivia night. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to join AAUW, please contact us at aauwsocoronm at gmail.com. It has been an honor to speak with you. I look forward to hearing from you and enjoy the rest of Women's Fest.